So today we're going to be making a password generator. Now, I've already made a video similar to this, actually practically the same video, but the reason why I'm doing a retake on this is to get the video quality a bit better. And one of you guys said that I should explain it a bit more in detail. Now, I don't know how much more details I can go into because I don't want the video to take too long. So just know that this video will be for beginners. The other one is also for beginners, but this one may explain some things that the other one does not. So the thing we're gonna be building today is this password generator. And you can see that it works like any other password generator. Like it's, there's nothing special, there's no special features. Uh, we could just go ahead and generate a lot of different passwords. And by the way, guys, if you want me to publish this thing on my website, then please comment down below and uh, then I will go ahead and publish this thing. But it's such a simple app. All you need to do is have three different files, a HTML file, a JavaScript file, and a CSS file. In the HTML file, I'm setting the title to password generator, then I'm requiring in the CSS style. Now, for those of you that do not know what is linking a CSS style is, I can just quickly try to uncomment this and you can see that this will remove the style. So the app will still work. It still has the same functions, but it's just, doesn't have a style. So if we go ahead and add the style now, now you can see that it's back. So that's the reason behind that. And in terms of the CSS, I'm not gonna go in too much details because I'm not a CSS programmer. And you can download Visual Studio Code and you can actually see what all this does. And you can also go on W3 School and read all their nice articles on this. And then you can learn this basic style here but it's very basic CSS. And then I have the, in the body tag here, I have a forum, which essentially extends down here. And that will be the forum that is this forum here. And in there I have an H2, which is just the title, which is this title up here. And then I have the result. And you can see all these are in this option diff. And then we just have different things within them. Um, but here we have the password length, which is, this is a label. So this is the label for the password and this is the input. So input, input, uh, and this is the label and the label. And here I'm setting some default properties and I'm also setting some limits. So it minimum at four and a maximum of 20. And that's because if we go higher, this will actually flow over and of course, you could have done something with the styling, so it couldn't do so, but I just decided to just limit it. And then essentially, we just repeat this thing here. We just have all of our different checkboxes here. And then at the bottom, we run the generate function. And you can see that this calls a JavaScript function, and this is the function we'll call. And then essentially we just end the form here and here at the bottom, we make sure to import our JavaScript file. Now, the reason why we're doing this in the bottom is just so the HTML loads first and then our generator because else the JavaScript code will try to access the HTML before it's generated and then we'll get an error. And in the JavaScript in our generate function, all we do is we declare an empty variable to our password and then we get all of the different um, values. Now you can see we have a little plus here and that's just to convert this string value here into a number. So that's all that does. You can also have converted this any other way to a number, but I just decided to do this because it's so simple. And this document dot get element by ID, essentially what it does is that it just gets an element by its ID. So if we just go here to the console and we run this, you can see that this gets our element here. And when we go ahead and run this dot value on it, then it just gets the value. And you can see it's a string. So that's why we do this plus thing here because that will actually go ahead and convert that to a number. Now, the reason why these are not called a value, I don't know, but this should be the named value, but it's not. Um, but you can see that when we run this, we'll get true. And if we go ahead and turn it off, and run it again, uh, we get false. So that's essentially the way it works. So we will just get all of those different values. Now this code here looks pretty funny, but essentially a true is a one and a false is a zero. 
and then essentially we just add those up and that will determine if we should return or not. This is just a basic check to check if all of the checkboxes are unchecked then we are not going to be running the function because then it would error out because you can't generate a password with no lowercase, no uppercase, no symbols or no numbers. Then we come to the actual password generator and here you can see we run the length of the code. So let's say that would be five. Then essentially this will run five times, but it will actually maybe run more because the way we are determining this will actually allow it to run multiple times until it actually have generated a password of five characters. But this here is the random function. Essentially this function will generate a number in between zero and three. And we'll also go ahead and show you the code for this function later. It's very simple. And this will generate the number from zero to three. And this will then determine which one of these that will be picked. But let's say the lowercase was picked over here, but the user did not want lowercase, then none of these other ones are gonna be true. And then essentially we'll just go ahead and subtract one. And since we added one here and subtracted one here, we didn't move anywhere and we're gonna be continuing the loop until this password is generated. And we also make sure to run this generate function and that's just to generate the password once the page first loads. And this is by the way, our generate function we have a min and a max and it just generates a random number. You, now I don't understand what all this stuff over here so you don't have to either. And essentially what it does is just generate the number in between min and max. And then we have our different generate functions. This one here generates lowercase characters. So again, we generate a random number in between this value and this value. And then we use the from char code, give it a char code and it will return a character. And this is just a range for lowercase numbers and this is the range for uppercase numbers. And that's the way we're generating both lowercase and uppercase and then we have the symbols here which is just a long string of all the symbols that we want to be able to generate and then because a string can be accessed like an array then we just access a random one of these to generate the symbol and you can see here we'll just go ahead and pick all of these different ones here and that's pretty much the way that works it's very simple and once this thing is done generating the password then we just make sure to put that password in the result and then we are done so if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here. And hopefully I see you in the next one.